where we got the call that he was murdered by someone who didn't care for human life. So nothing will ever bring my brother back, but all I beg is for whoever has any information, no matter how small, to come forward, even if it's anonymous. Like I said, nothing will bring my brother life back to life, but at least we'll have peace knowing that justice is served. Les pido por favor, viene el Día de las Madres. Yo sé que alguien de las personas que estaban aquí ese día que mataron a mi hijo, debe, alguien debe tener hijos, mamás, a las mamás, al papá. Si, si había hombres y mujeres, alguien de las personas debe de tener hijos. Quitarte a un hijo es como arrancarte el corazón en pedazos, que te meten la mano y te sacan el corazón, parte de tu corazón con, con la mano así, sin nada, que te jalan. Así es como me siento yo. Nadie tiene idea de qué dolor tan grande traigo en mi corazón. Día a día, hace tres años, y siento que fue ayer, les pido el favor a esos padres que tienen hijos, que se pongan en mi lugar. Precisamente ese día las madres me lo quitaron. Por favor, por su madrecita, por lo que más quieran, ayuden a encontrar a ese asesino, por favor. Eso es todo lo que les pido. Por favor, no era justo, era un muchacho alegre. Él estaba estudiando, tenía muchas ganas de vivir. Él quería, él estaba estudiando para ser doctor. Estaba estudiando para, como paramédico, para ser doctor de los paramédicos. Por favor, le suplico por todo mi corazón que se conduelan de mí. Padres o madres de muchachos, si saben algo de ese asesino, hablen por favor. Mi nombre es Graciela Santana. Muchas gracias. Okay, now we'll open it up to Q&A. Yes, sir. George Kelly, Bay Area News Group. Good morning. Uh, what leads have led people to this day? Uh, investigations continuing in the, over the last couple of months. You know, I can't discuss any specific leads because I don't want to jeopardize it. It's still an ongoing investigation and we're actively investigating it. We've been investigating it for the last three years and following up on leads that have come in on an ongoing basis. But as it stands, the case still remains unsolved. And so that's why now we're reaching out to the public to ask for their help in trying to bring this uh, person to justice. And, and Sergeant, if you could kind of stay this way, how did the composite sketch come to be? I mean, where did that come from? Is this a collaboration from witnesses? I don't have the specific information about how the, com the composite sketch um, came to be. Um, I do know that it has been being used internally and shared among the law enforcement community and trying to develop additional leads in the case. Uh, and initially we did not go uh, to the public with the sketch because we didn't want to jeopardize the ongoing investigation. But now that's no longer the case and so now we are reaching out to the community and the public to see if they recognize this individual and can help us solve this case. What about the gun in this case? I know you can't necessarily go into specifics, but is there anything that the public could know about this gun or the gun that was used or the bullets that's been traced to a stolen gun or anything? I don't have any details about the gun. Any other questions? Do you have persons of interest? Is Bob Do you have persons of interest? Do you have to pull them all out? I don't have any details about the persons of interest in the case. Um, if you wouldn't want to the, announce that at this time because it could jeopardize the ongoing investigation. We, uh, uh, Teresa Stasio Chamfor, could we talk to the sister again? Yes. Thank you, sir. Hola, mamá. 
I'm saying is that my brother loved life. He was always happy. He had a really good heart, a very good heart. Um, even my friends still talk about it, how sometimes they would, some guy would disrespect them and he would just dance up for them. Um, he was going to school, he was working, he was kitchen manager at Chipotle, he was going to Ohio College. He was a very loving son with my mom, that's her only boy, so it was like her baby still, no matter how old he was. He was just a very good brother. He always protected his sisters, even though he was younger than me. He was always there for me, like an older brother. He loved kids. He just loved to go out and have a good time and be around friends and family. And even the night before this happened, the day before this happened, me, my little sister, and him, we went to Denny's and we were having a really good conversation. Uh, he said that he missed having the whole family there um, and just become close like before. And it was unfortunate because the day after he was taken away and the day of his funeral is when all the family came together and it shouldn't have been like that you based on what you're saying you don't sound surprised that he was trying to break up a fight between strangers no he, he was a type that he didn't care if he saw someone that was being um, disrespected or someone that didn't you know stand a chance to stand up for themselves he would intervene did he have a girlfriend? Um, that, at the time, he was talking to someone, yeah. Did he go to school in Fremont? College? Yeah, Ohlone College. <laughs> and where did he go in high school? Um, he went to... Tennyson? No, Tennyson. And he wanted to be a doctor? A paramedic. Because he liked helping people, so that's what he wanted to do. Three years is a long time, America. Uh, no, no me sorprende, porque él siempre quería ayudar a los que no podían defenderse. Incluso mis uh, amigas me dijeron como una vez, una de ellas, uh, un muchacho le estaba faltando respeto y él se metió y le dijo, no le faltes el respeto. Él era así. Did, did he come out here often for the, for the view? Um, kind of, yeah. He liked, he loved to be up like on hills. He loved to go like Hayward Hills. He just loved the view. He said it brought him peace. Maribel, how much, how optimistic are you now with, with this sketch coming out and being made public? How, how much optimism does the family have? That, well, uh, we're this not, could be the key. We're hopeful. We're never going to give up. No matter how small the hope is, we're still going to keep fighting for justice. Um, we're going to cooperate as much as we can. We'll do whatever it takes to help bring this person to justice. How would you describe the last three years for you and your family? It's hard. It's very hard. Like, not, I know they say time heals everything. I mean, you have your days when you're okay, but any little thing reminds you of them when you want to call. Call that person. And you know that they're no longer there. It just hurts, especially to see my mom break down every day. She still cries for me. Every day, like, it's hard. It's very difficult. Especially for my mom. It's very difficult because all the days she cries. And I try to be strong, but sometimes you can't. You have your days when you remember that person and you want to call her, and you can't. Because you have
would you, um, so the, the sketch is going to go out there. Would you just ask people to take some time and look at the sketch and see if they can really help your family? Would you put the plea out to people? Yeah. So I'm asking, um, now that the sketch is out, for anyone, if anyone recognizes the sketch or that person, to please come forward, really take a time, your time to look at the sketch. That would be very helpful. It would mean a lot to your family? And it would mean a lot to the family. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Do you have a hard copy of the sketch? We did bring some copies of the composite sketch with us today, so we can provide those to anybody that wants them. And again, they will also be available on our website, police.berkeley.edu. We download them all. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you for your time.